Yo, what up, everybody? My name is Drake Demore from the Wind City Sports Podcast, and this episode of Cedric Ben's Combat Quarter is brought to you by the Wind City Sports Podcast. Check us out on Spotify, iTunes, and anywhere podcasts are found on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or directly on windcitysports.com. Smell you later. What up, what up? Welcome to Cedric's Combat Corner number 12. I am your host, Cedric Ben. Today on the Triple C's podcast, we're going to go over the two main boxing matches from the past weekend, main event being Tyson Fury versus Otto Wallen, two heavyweights, and then um, two little guys in the co-main event. The second thing will be just a quick a quick breakdown with my educated opinion on what each fighter can do to improve for their next uh, next matches. And the third topic is the, the weekly BTF boxing training focus of the week. This week's focus is going to be on how to deal with um, fighting off the ropes. There's a bunch of different ways to, to get off the ropes, but we'll, we'll focus on uh, just one way this week. All right, let's get into it. Starting with the challenger, Mr. Otto Wallen from Sweden, I believe, um, came in with a very good record. Um, not uh, against good competition, but the past couple of years, he's been the main sparring partner for a lot of the top heavyweights in the world, from Anthony Joshua to Dylan White to Gerald Miller. So um, he's uh, he's been up there in, in that regard, not in the fight range, but in the sparring range. Tyson Fury, one of the top heavyweights in the world right now, took this challenge on. First round, Wallen came out uh, came out strong. I get, definitely gave Wallen that first round. Uh, the second round, Fury came out and established more control of the fight, landed some good long straight rights. Wallen and you know the challenger simply did not counter counter punch fast enough. He was trying, but just you know he just couldn't get past Fury's reach. Tyson Fury at six foot nine definitely knows knows how to use his reach. He has an awkward style, but it's you know it's been successful this far in his career. In the third round, Wallen was able to to corner Fury and land a big overhand left that left a cut over over Fury's eye. Um, but he couldn't capitalize it, capitalize on the, on that. So on the fourth round on, I mean, I don't know if he if if uh, if the challenger just uh, wasted all of his energy which should not be an excuse going into the third round of a championship fight. But going in, you know, starting in the fourth round, he just looked flat-footed. His work rate slowed down, mostly because of Fury's, Fury's boxing, the way that Fury was boxing. And, uh, yeah, Fury just took control of the fight. Now, it, it, the seventh round on just simply just got kind of ugly. Fury, I'm not sure if it's because if, if it's he was not in shape or if this was his actual strategy, I've seen him do this another time during his career. But like, I don't know, he just started to look sloppy. He was more, he was instead of boxing around and using that skill level that he's always talking about and bragging about, he chose to just use his um, his height and weight advantage and just lean on the person to to to, to neutralize their offense so they couldn't do nothing. And um, yeah, he just kind of that's what he chose to do. And with the challenger Wallen being flat-footed, couldn't get out the way, so we just leaned up, leaned up against him, and yeah, it was just a kind of a sloppy fight up until that point. Fury would just throw a couple punches and lean on him, and that's how that one went. So, <laughs> Mister Wallen, Mister Otto Wallen, uh, um, a few things that uh, to definitely improve on if you're going to be challenging for for belts at this level. Being flat-footed is is okay, especially if you're trying to throw power punches. But at some point in time, you you have to have other things to uh, in your repertoire. Not you know, as a heavyweight, you're not going to be dancing around, but you need to have at least a little bit of better footwork just to get yourself into different you know different positions to land punches. Um, so I I would suggest for him to do a lot more footwork drills. I actually have two videos on my YouTube page, Cedric Sports Training, uh, specifically targeted for for footwork. Um, 
if you go on my page and scroll down and look under the video that says how to improve foot speed and hand-eye coordination. And the next one was uh, how to improve agility and coordination uh, with the skipping rope. So I would highly suggest for Mr. Uh, Otto Wallen to check out my videos <laughs> uh, to improve that. Um, the other thing I would suggest, if and this is for all, if you're a short heavyweight out there, which... You know, Tyson Fury is six foot nine. So if you're a heavyweight out there looking to challenge um, a taller person or, or any weight class for that matter, fighting a taller person, every short person should study, short boxer should study two specific box. I'm sure there's plenty of boxers that, that, you know, other coaches can name, but the two main guys that come to mind for me are uh, Mike Tyson and Smoking Joe Frazier, two short heavyweights who had. A lot of success against taller, taller guys. Mike Tyson was shorter than almost everybody he fought, but uh, a lot of people don't realize he actually out-jabbed everyone he fought. He, yeah, out being the shorter person at five foot eleven, he out-jabbed most of the taller guys that he fought, and he did that with footwork, catching, and slipping, and great head movement. And then you got smoking Joe Frazier who had some epic uh, legendary battles with Muhammad Ali with his ducking under and jumping up with hooks, not literally jumping, but using that momentum from ducking under to come up top with a hook against those taller guys. He actually broke Muhammad Ali's jaw in one of their, one of their, uh, one of their matches with that style. Yeah, now Mr. Tyson Fury, this guy, man, he is mentioned before tall awkward and definitely knows how to use that to his advantage one thing i would suggest to him is just uh i guess not i guess but for sure improve the cardio somehow it's not always he hasn't always done this before but this whole thing about just leaning on a person and using your weight to 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 hold him against the ropes that um that's not going to work against everyone it didn't work you know against the top level guys so you got to improve on that cardio to make sure that you can uh, keep up using that long range and reach. Now that I think of it, I mean, he doesn't have a reputation of having bad cardio. I mean, he went the distance with, with Deontay Wilder and was able to get up from that crazy right hand that Wilder landed on him. And the only way you can recover, you can recover from a, you know, a hard punch is, is having good cardio. So it's not a question in all of his fights, but um, he definitely looked like, or maybe it was a combination of the cut that maybe affected him, but just, just uh, yeah, get that cardio up so you don't have to look so sloppy. The other thing is just keeping, just making sure the accuracy is, is, uh, is on point. Again, very good job of using his reach, but I think if he can land those punches a little bit more closer to the chin as, a part, as opposed to just you know, grazing punches off the, you know, the side and stuff like that. If he can be a little bit more accurate with those punches, he might be able to stop guys a little bit sooner. Um, keeping, he does a good job of, of keeping that, uh, that left hand down and throwing some up jabs from that position. But when it comes to the right hand, if he can just keep that right hand a little bit closer to the chin, so it's a shorter distance from where you throw it from to land on, on the target, as opposed to being all the way down from the from the hips and throwing it from there, because it's coming from a further distance than what the jab is is coming from, it's a little bit harder. But if that if that right hand, and of course I'm speaking if the person is in an orthodox stance, if that right hand is closer to the chin, you can still play around with that left hand. You know, if you long you know how to use your reach, play with that left hand and just fire that right hand as soon as it's ready he'd be able to land that a little bit more. So yeah, just tighten up that uh, technique and, uh, and accuracy. All right, all right. Now, for the co-main event, we have some uh, little guys with some serious power. The challenger, Juan Miguel Ilorde from the Philippines, making his championship debut versus Emmanuel Navarrete from the from Mexico <laughs> who is um 3 and 0 since winning his championship uh since winning his championship fight. Now Navarrete is one of those guys that um boxers hate fighting 
because he is in shape and unpredictable. Now, obviously, you're going to think, you know, obviously you have to be in shape for a boxing match. But sometimes, sometimes you can still win a fight, even if you're not in the best shape, but you still, but your skill level is that much superior to, to your opponent. But then again, every once in a while, you run into one of these random boxers whose number one skill level is their cardio. And then Navarrete is definitely one of the one of those guys. Um, unpredictable. I wouldn't say he exactly has a high skill level when it comes to traditional boxing combinations, you know, like the traditional one two hook to the body or double jab, slip slip. Um <laughs> Like he's at one point, like he was, and and he's standing in an orthodox stance, was brave enough just to start with lead left uppercuts, right to the chin too. It's not like he like tried to crouch down to and block his face and and tried to come inside to the body. Just straight up leap forward with two left uppercuts to the chin, and he did this multiple times, um, and then he you know just stand there and then just thought right him straight right to the body. Step to the side, whip a left hook to the head, step to the side, and then he'd throw a jab. And on top of that, he has a longer reach. So that when he'd mix in just a random long jab, it really stuck out. Um, so, yeah, man, just in shape and, and unpredictable, man. Just, yeah, man, he's something else. Uh, the challenger simply, simply could not handle it. Um, and his corner was smart to throw in the towel in the seventh round. I always respect coaches that um don't don't let their fighters take their pride let you know let their fighters get hurt by 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 their pride like no fighter wants to quit every no matter how bad hurt they are most real fighters will will continue on you know it's up to the coach to to realize might have took enough punishment and to to think about their rest of their life not just the pride for the moment so my advice to uh, to the challenger from the Philippines, you know, this, I mean, my advice to him would be to simply just to get some better sparring partners, just to raise your skill level. He came into this fight 28 and 1 with 15 KOs. He's been, he's 18 and 0 since his last loss. But most of those matches were in the Philippines and they don't, they're not exactly known for having the best competition. Much respect to Manny Pacquiao and Nonito Donaire. But um, yeah, so let's get some better sparring partners and uh, yeah, just improve that skill level. One of the ways, one of the ways that you can, uh, you can improve on that in sparring is by one person staying in the ring and having multiple sparring partners switching up, uh, um, you know, having, sorry, having a different sparring partner jumping in the ring each minute, maybe have a different style from orthodox to, to southpaw to a shore guy to a tall guy um, specifically to deal with it with an unpredictable guy like uh, like Navarrete um, of course if you're if you're have one specific fighter that you're training for you can still get multiple sparring partners but all of, all of the same style yeah now, for the champion, I mean, just keep doing what you're doing, man. I've seen this guy fight three times, and all three times he's beat up his uh, his opponents. And not no bums either. Uh, uh, well, it was the same guy twice, Mr. Dog Bay. Um, he, he came out as the challenger as the first, in the first match and did not look like the challenger at all. Just kept that pressure on the whole time. The only thing I guess I, I haven't got a chance to critique his his defense because none of the none of the, the two the two good guys that he did face didn't really give him a chance anything offense for him to, to worry about. So you know it was a combination of him, what he was doing with his unpredictable style and his crazy cardio. Yeah. Just make sure you keep your your defense up in case you do fight somebody that uh, that can match what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. And now for the third topic of the show, the BTF boxing training focus of the week. This week's focus is on one way to to fight your way off the ropes. If someone's doing a good job of cutting off the ring and and they're trying to keep you trapped there. 
um, to the ways if they're if they're throwing straight punches, slip, slip, uppercut to the body, and then three steps, three steps to circle your way to the center. And on that third step, you should be facing that uh, facing your opponent, ready to fire back at them. And that's going both ways. Or if um, you're, you can go in the other direction, slip and then duck under to go to the other side. Make sure you throw an uppercut first and then step out. Again, three steps, three steps to get to the side. <laughs> Very hard to visualize this as, uh, as I'm explaining it. So um, make sure you check out. Uh, I just made the video today. So by the time this, this, this podcast comes out, it should be up, uploaded on my YouTube page, Cedric Sports Training titled how to get off the ropes part one yep and there you have it two weeks from now we have earl spence versus sean porter i cannot wait for that one um i might even have to do a a a pre-fight analysis of that one um so yeah man i can't wait for that if you have any questions hit me up on all social medias at cedric sports Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Catch y'all soon. Shout out to Win City Sports. Peace. <laughs>